Today, we're taking a look at a CPU that's coming under $200, even brand new. And this is the Ryzen 7 5700X, which you guys have been asking me to take a look at for a while. And actually, when I was in Australia, I purchased uh, two of these CPUs and they were just that good, not just in terms of value for money, but also in terms of if you want to, say, sell a PC or build something for your friend, not just in the fact that you get eight cores, 16 threads, but also the CPU has some really good characteristics to it that I in particular, maybe I'm just one of the few nowadays that don't like these really high wattage running and hot running CPUs. I like this CPU because it's tuned pretty uh, conservatively out of the box, but let's get into the gaming benchmark numbers here today, where we're gonna take a look at how this thing performs, even with an RTX 4090, which is pretty much unrealistic in a lot of scenarios because it's just too expensive of a GPU, but you're gonna be surprised at how well this thing performs in the real world. Never pay full price for Windows 10 or 11 again. With today's video sponsor, SED Keys, you can get activated for as little as $15 using that coupon. BFTYC. Links in description below. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. And today we're testing out at three different resolutions. So we got 1080p lowest settings, which is great for those people who want to know the max theoretical performance of that CPU. How high can this thing go? If I want to stay on this CPU for a few more years, is it going to cause any problems for me? Especially if I want to update my GPU later. Then we've got 1440p max settings as well as 4k max settings because there's a lot of popular monitors out there even for 1440p for example that offer some really good value and so if you can sort of match up this higher end gpu off the used market is this cpu going to be a good choice and here's where on cyberpunk 2077 lower settings at 1080p we've got here 152 average fps and the 0.1 percent lows are also nothing to sweat about coming over 80 so this is going to give you a really smooth experience coupled in with some ddr4 for 3600 megahertz which is the personal sweet spot for me it's something that i recommend to a lot of people not just for value but also they're going to have no problems when they lock in those xmp profiles in general across the range of cpus that were shown here we've also got the ryzen 7 1700 which i recently picked up on a deals hunt and that's definitely showing its age but you'll notice i can really only get the memory to 2933 megahertz with this particular CPU. So the Ryzen 7 1700 does have its difficulties when it comes to games, but even then looking at this result, something that's turning six years old will still play these titles absolutely fine with over 60 average FPS. Though stepping things up to 1440p max settings shows that that gap between the 5700X and the higher cost CPUs is starting to close greatly. We're looking at these CPUs here, all of them cost at least 50% more, but you're not getting 50% more FPS. And then stepping things up to 4K shows that not only is the Ryzen 7 5700X doing well, but also the i3-12100 is doing a good job with that RTX 4090 at max settings. Though the next title we're pulling up here is Horizon Zero Dawn. This tends to like the AMD CPUs, at least the later stuff here besides the Ryzen 7 1700, where the FPS is quite high across all these CPUs, but in particular the 7950X is leading the benchmarks here. But if we look at the Ryzen 7 5700X, it's doing an extremely good job in this game, scoring both great average FPS and good 0.1% lows too. Going up to 1440p, over 200 average FPS with a good 0.1% low. And then going up to 4K, we've got great FPS here too. But even if we look at the Ryzen 7 1700, if I'm playing Horizon Zero Dawn again, with over 60 average FPS, I'm happy. And all the CPUs here deliver and then some. Though it's at this point that you're probably thinking, Brian, you're talking about 60 FPS. You're okay with this. I'm not okay with this. I want some higher FPS numbers because I'm a hardcore gamer. I want to be getting wins across the belt here. Show me the numbers. Show me the competitive FPS titles. Here's where we'll pull up CSGO at 1080p, lower settings, where you can see the Ryzen 7 5700X, 648 average FPS. In fact, it actually scored a victory over the 5800X3D, which was a little bit surprising, but it is the only title where it does this. Though with over 600 average FPS, I think if you're not getting the wins here, it's not the CPU. But if we look at the Ryzen 7 1700, we can see how much over the generations of Ryzen, the FPS has increased on the eight core 16 threads. So that for me personally was actually really 
interesting to see on the CSGO graphs, but also going up to 1440p, this time from lower settings to very high settings, with that RTX 4090 shows that the uh, 5700X, again, is getting really high FPS. If we look at the top of the charts, you've got the 7950X, the 13900K. These are CPUs that can cost two to three times more, but the FPS is only 1.1X more. And when we step things up to 4K, this is again a similar story with CSGO. The last title we are showing you guys today is the Shadow of the Tomb Raider Benchmark 1080p lowest settings. And here's where we're getting over 200 average FPS with the 0.1% lows also being really well controlled too. Now stepping things up to 1440p, again, over 200 average FPS and then going up to 4K shows that it is in the same league as those other CPUs above it. Even though this CPU is only clocked at four gigahertz all core. And the next graph I'm gonna show for you guys is the power consumption whilst we're gaming. So we're getting some pretty good FPS here and we're using up 71 watts. But what makes the Ryzen 7 5700X even better is that it undervolts pretty well. I mean, all CPUs, if you're getting them in nowadays, this is personally, I'm a big fan of this, undervolting them and getting the best power efficiency possible. And here's where this responds really well, being one of the most power efficient gaming CPUs out there, not just out of the box, but also you can undervolt it a little bit more and it's gonna respond quite well. Though that power consumption result, really impressive. And what I like about it even more is that out of the box, you can get the Ryzen 7 5700X and say, go with an A520 motherboard. And for gaming, you're gonna be absolutely fine since Shadow of the Tomb Raider does tend to max the CPU in a lot of its different resolutions, especially coupled with an RTX 4090. Now, the Ryzen 7 5700X, one thing that it doesn't come with is an included box cooler. So you will have to go out and buy an additional cooler with the purchase of this CPU. So that's one thing I kind of didn't like. I would have loved to have seen this CPU arrive with a Wraith Prism, which is not only a good CPU in terms of its aesthetics, but it's also a decent CPU in terms of its cooling performance, where especially coupled in with a CPU while you're gaming that's using 71 watts, it would do a really good job. And in fact, all the tests in today's video was done with the Wraith Prism. Though if you want some cheap cooling options to go with the Ryzen 7 5700X, for instance, something like this, the iGo ICE 400SE, that's a $15 cooler off AliExpress. Same with the John's Bow, that'll actually set you back a little bit more money, but these are real budget choice CPUs that I'll have a video on soon, an AliExpress a CPU cooler showdown to see which of these CPUs does really well with a mid-range CPU and also the high-end options for you guys who wanna get the best value possible. So, so far, so good with the Ryzen 7 5700X. It's got the performance there when it comes to gaming. It's definitely no slouch. It's got the efficiency, but also what about the productivity scores? And here's where I ran a couple of benchmarks, just the Cinebench R23 to show you the maximum performance here and scoring a little over 13,000 points. And that's a decent score. You'll be able to do some great video editing with this CPU, especially coupled in with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. But also if we look at the Adobe Premiere Pro, I do this test with an RTX 3080, it's scoring in pretty well here too. So all around, it'll do not just a good job at gaming, but also be a great CPU for a mid-range workstation too. Though the final benchmark will show up here is the Fire Strike Extreme Physics score, which overall I find is a really good indicator for seeing how well this CPU will do across the board in terms of not just say now's games, but also in the future too. And here's where it's scoring in the middle of the pack here. So it's a very solid CPU for gaming. And with all that information out of the way, it's time to give you guys the final recommendation with the Ryzen 7 5700X. And basically this thing is a big win in my books. You're coming in with under 200 bucks, eight cores, 16 threads, but it's not just any eight cores, 16 threads, but it's eight relevant cores, 16 relevant threads. It's got great efficiency, great compatibility in that you can couple it with a budget cooler, budget motherboard, and really extract so much value out of this CPU. Now, it is kind of a shame to see that Intel, AMD, they love releasing these better value products later in the cycle. So you may be looking at the 5700X and thinking, well, there's already the Ryzen 7000 series CPUs out. Why would I get this? And it comes down to motherboard costs, DDR4 memory costs, as well as the CPU itself. 
Now, an 8-core 16 thread on the Ryzen 7000 series line is going to cost you over $300. So you're paying over 50% more. And in a lot of cases, you're not going to get 50% more performance in actually any of the metrics that I tested here today. So ultimately, if you're looking for the best value, that's where the 5700X is really going to deliver. And it's going to deliver a lot more in the fact that we today we took a look at the CPU with an RTX 4090. If you want to get, say, an RTX 3060 or, say, an RX 6700 XT, you're going to notice even less of a difference between this CPU and those higher-end models that cost a lot more money. So the value proposition here is absolutely amazing. Do keep in mind, you'll have to get a separate box cooler. But that being said, with what I've seen with uh, recently with the Wraith Stealth and things like that, I'm actually shying away from the box coolers, as we said in today's video, unless they're those good box coolers like the Wraith Prism. Anyhow, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. This thing is an absolute winner. Also, I noticed in the top selling charts here, this CPU alongside the i5-13500, they're both selling really well. So I've got to take a look at the i5-13500. Sorry, I've been a little bit slow. I've had to travel between Australia and Japan. My boy wanted to come with me, then I had to bring him back, go to school. And so, yeah, he gets the blame for the slow content <laughs> this time around. But uh, <laughs> the content should be rolling in a little bit faster now. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it and you enjoyed today's video and the recommendation. If you guys have any extra thoughts and opinions or anything you disagree with, drop a comment in the comment section below and also smash that like button for us. And with that said, we've got the question of the day here. And this comes from Al Marty and they say, does not changing the thermal pads, I think he means pads, uh, cause a device stop error on the GPU? The D3... D device when opening games and when OCCT is detected on VRAM, it does not work. And I change a new system and I get the same errors. Are there any solutions? So unfortunately, I have seen something like that happen in the past. That is just a faulty GPU. I think whatever you do uh, with that GPU going forward, you have to replace the faulty part. And so putting thermal replacing the thermal pads i believe that's not going to do anything because you just can't even get the application to open in the first place usually if vram is getting too hot uh, either a few things will happen the gpu will just shut off thermal uh, trip or you'll start getting some really uh janky lines on that benchmark before it shuts off so uh yeah i would uh i condolences my man but that uh that gpu is a goner I'd look into getting it fixed. Hope that answers that question. And with that aside, I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. If you stayed this far and you're enjoying that tech, yes, content, be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell, and I'll see you next time. Peace out for now. Bye.